Hi, I'm Professor Miller and I am your Gen Chem 1 teacher. You have enrolled in the asynchronous course, which means we aren't going to meet in person or on Zoom unless you choose to come to office hours, which is always an option. Um, but rather, you will be working through the material at your at sort of on your own. That means that communication with me will mostly be via email and discussion boards and journal posts, okay? So I just want to walk you through a few of the things you need to know right away and um, help you figure out how to find um, everything you're going to do, okay? So here we have Blackboard, and you're going to have two different courses. You're going to have one for lecture, which has a tree on it on my screen. I'm not sure if it's the same for you guys or not, but it will say fall 2021, general chemistry one, and the CRN here is 10738. So you'll click on that. That's our lecture site. The first thing you always want to look at in a course is the syllabus. This is a very lengthy document because SUNY requires lots and lots of details on syllabi when they're written for online classes. So my recommendation is usually when you open this up, it's going to look like this. You want to click this document outline, which works like a table of contents to help you navigate. It's much better than scrolling through all the pages. OK, so right off the bat, this is the information about the course. This is my office hours right here. And so you have a choice. You can come and see me in the lab certain hours each week, or you can come and see me on Zoom other times. The Zoom link is right here in your syllabus, and you just need to make sure that you capitalize the G and the C whenever you come to see me for the password. Okay, so this is all my contact info that you, you have at your fingertips anytime you need it. This course is for people who are majoring in science, engineering, they want to be doctors. Um, so it is the higher level version of chemistry. If you are pursuing something in the allied health fields like respiratory therapy or nursing, probably CH131 is the course you need. Okay, so if that might be the case for you, you might be in the wrong course, reach out to me right away so we can get you situated, okay? But this course uh, will transfer as a general chemistry course for science majors um, pretty much anywhere. The, one of the reasons for that, I don't know if you see this or not, but there's a final exam affiliated with the class that's going to be in person, even though this is an online class because it's a national test. So one of the reasons this course transfers so well to other schools is that we give that test. Okay, so we're saying that we are holding you to the standard of the American Chemical Society. Okay, so these are your learning objectives for the course. You should read those. That's basically what you have to prove you know in order to get a good grade in the course. The prerequisite for the course is that you are supposed to have taken high school chemistry. So if you haven't done that, we need to have a conversation and come up with a plan. You also have to have a background that will allow you to be successful in the mathematics area because, of course, there's lots of math and chemistry. If you're taking MA125 right now, um, that's okay. Or if you have passed it already, that is also okay. For the lecture, you don't need to purchase anything. It is built into Blackboard for you. The only thing that costs you for the lecture is a program called Alex, which you've paid with your student fees. I know some people were having issues where there, there was a pay, um, a paywall that comes up. They, they're supposed to fix that today, which is Tuesday, the 31st. So if you see something like that, please send me a screenshot and I will get them to fix it. Um, but you shouldn't at this point, okay? So Alex is, I don't like to call it a homework system because that sounds like it's something you would only do at home. This is something I use in person as well. Um, but it's a system that adapts to what you know and doesn't make you repeat a bunch of things you already learned. Uh, but it focuses on things that you need practice on, OK? And so we'll go over the grading in a moment. But that's built into the course. You don't need to buy anything else. That replaced a $300 textbook. OK, we still have a text, but it's all online links that are in the syllabus. You just don't have to pay for that. OK, you're going to need some technology. It's an online class. If that's 
a struggle for you at all, there are resources on campus, C3, um, the letter C and the number three, at mvcc.edu is a good resource if you need help with that sort of thing. Um, they might be able to do something for you. But it is essential to have access to a computer and a reliable internet connection. Okay, so on the learning activities and assessments, you can read in depth about why my course is structured the way it is and sort of my philosophy of learning. Um, what it boils down to is practice, practice, practice. All right, you're gonna make mistakes. That's part of science, it's part of life. So you have to become comfortable with failure and part of it, that's called the growth mindset, by the way. Um, and so part of your job is going to be to learn when you are failing constructively and when you need help, all right? And so when you need help, you can come and see me during my office hours, or you can make an appointment outside of that if, if that's not enough time. Um, the idea is not to sit there doing the same problems like five or six times, okay? I want you to try like two or three times. And if none of the resources in Alex or the textbook or the lecture notes are helping you, then you come meet with me and we'll figure it out. Okay, um, so this is another description of further depth about what Alex is, how it works, what you need to do, all of that. Um, in another video, I'll show you a brief tour of Alex. But this is the philosophy behind Alex in particular. And of course, this is about that final exam I was talking about. Most people are really curious what they have to do to pass the class. So the first thing is you have to get at least 60% on your lab score. Um, the lab as a total part of your class grade is only 25% of the grade. Uh, it's the second highest cat category right behind Alex. But if you don't turn things in in lab, you're going to fail it. And chemistry is a hands-on lab science. So you have to turn things in so we can see that you're understanding the science. So to encourage that, the whole department has uh, the policy that you have to get 60% or better in order to pass the whole class, even if you have an A in the lecture, okay? The lab is important. And then we have a few other uh, choices for how you can engage with the class. You're going to have things like journals, which are communications that only you and I can see. And you're going to have opportunities like discussion boards where you can work more collaboratively with other people in the class. You can come to office hours, you can participate in tutoring. If you do that, you need to save the documentation proving that you went to the tutor and then I can give you, um, I can keep record of that to contribute to your class engagement. There's going to be four exams, they are all online. They're worth 15% of your grade. There's two components in the grade for Alex. The first one is how much you learn by the end of the semester, essentially. At the end of the semester, if you've learned 100% of the topics that I have on Alex, you'll get 150 points towards your final grade out of roughly 1,000. If you also complete each objective on time, then you will get another 150 points. So it's worth up to a third, almost a third of your grade overall. The final exam that you'll take in person is worth 15% of your grade. And again, your lab is 25, okay? Um, in general, this is going to be our schedule. This is assuming no drastic changes because of COVID or whatever might happen. I give you this right in the beginning so that you can plan every assignment that's due in this course. The only thing that's not included in here is gonna be those discussion posts and journals. I will give you a week's notice before those are due. Um, and they're not gonna be super time intensive. Often they will just be reflections or making connections between some of the topics we're talking about or things like that, okay? But I give you this so that you can plan ahead for your whole semester. Your lab instructor should also provide you all the due dates for the lab reports. So that way you can look ahead and make plans for when you're going to accomplish these things. You'll notice the first task is to take the initial knowledge check in Alex by this Friday around 3 p.m. Okay. Then after that's finished, it's going to open up up to 26 topics that are prerequisites for the course. So it gives you an opportunity to learn the materials that you might not remember 
from high school or your last math class. And so then it's not until the week after that when we jump into brand new topics. Once we do that, there will be lecture notes made available in the course materials part of Blackboard. So let me show you that. Sorry, course documents is what I meant. All right, so right now, what is up here is just Alex, because that's the primary focus for the week. I want you to log in there and get going on it. And then instructions on printing the lecture notes, if that's a good way for you to learn. I don't grade these. These are for your reference. Um, oh, my pictures are broken. I'll have to fix that. In the future, in this location, you will see any lecture notes, videos, etc., that are relevant for that week's topics. Okay, but there's no new topics right now, so it's all just pretty straightforward at the moment. You'll find the discussion posts in this and under discussions here. You should go make an introduction post. The instructions are right here. Make sure you read them. Um, and then other important links include being able to email me directly here. And you can make tutoring appointments by clicking on the Learning Commons button and clicking Appointment. They have a nice video of what the Learning Commons is like. You can get online appointments. You can get evening, weekend appointments, in person, however you want to do it. They're, they're trying to be as flexible as possible. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, and then your grades. OK, so everything I grade you on is going to be entered here you can click it and see my feedback see what your current standing is all that kind of stuff um alex does not automatically get put into this grade book so they have two different grade books so um don't freak out if you've completed something in alex and it's not in blackboard yet it just means i haven't manually put it over there okay so i'm going to show you what alex looks like um you're not going to see this part you'll see a much cooler menu initially. So you should read these tips. I'm going to skip ahead because I have read them. Um, but you'll click Get Started, and you'll go through a tools tutorial. So go ahead and complete this so you understand how to use all the features in Alex. I'm skipping it. You can do that on your own. Once you're finished with the tutorial, you'll see this, this screen that says you have unlocked your initial knowledge check. So you'll click Continue. It's going to um, click Start Knowledge Check. This is not something I want you to study for. This is not a grade in and of itself. Just doing it is all I need you to do for this week. These are some good study tips, by the way. People have a tendency not to want to write paper and pencil um, when they're doing online classes. But I have to tell you that even for online classes, it really, really helps people to get the right answer if they write things down. It should be your own work. Google is not going to actually help you with this. It frequently makes people do more work by giving the wrong answers. So I wouldn't do that. OK, so you're going to go ahead and start. And it's going to ask you a series of questions. And you may or may not know the answers, and that's OK. Do the best that you can do. And if you, you're really good at something, it's going to mean when we come to that topic in class, like this particular topic is in chapter three. Um, when we get to that topic in class, you're not going to have to do as much homework. OK, if you're good at it. Um, so you're just going to go through these questions. You can see your progress bar up here. I'm going to skip this. You should not. I don't think you even have the option, actually. And we're going to pretend like we're a student who knows a little bit, but they're just starting Gen Chem. Okay. So this is called your, your Alex Pie. And by the end of the semester, the idea is every one of these wedges will be completely filled in with color. That's the mastery goal. There's 139 total topics. So at the end of the semester, your mastery goal, that 15% of your total grade, will be based on how many of those topics you have completed. So you can see a visual representation of that in the form of this pie. Each one has a particular number of topics. And you can really click on all of these and see which topics you need to work on, see which ones you already know. Once you get to this screen, you're beginning the work that's due on Friday the 10th, all right? This is a good idea to start as soon as you can because sometimes we're gonna have lots and lots of topics. Like this person has 11 topics to learn prior to the 10th. That can take some time. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and start that path. There's a few features to show you here. 
this arrow drops down and shows the carousel. This is where all the topics um, that are accessible to, to you are available. You can see that this has a diamond on it. That means this is a topic due this week. So in other words, you'll get credit for completing it. Completing a topic in Alex means you have answered the questions correctly three times in a row. And I wanna warn you, it, it doesn't work to simply use the last question as a way of trying to deduce the answer to the next because they change things subtly to trip you up if that's what you're doing. What Alex really is looking for is to make sure you really understand the material, okay? So again, like I said before, if you get stuck on stuff, just you know, come to office hours and we can work through some of these. Later on, you're gonna find that there are gonna be topics that have a lock symbol on them. This means that there's a prerequisite topic you have to finish first. If you click the lock symbol, sometimes it will even tell you which topics to go do in order to unlock it. If you get behind, it can be a little challenging to figure out how to catch up because there's gonna be a bunch of locks everywhere. In order to figure that out, you can come and ask me and we can work through it in office hours if you're lost, okay? Don't wait until weeks later because it's only gonna get worse, okay? This menu also allows you to drop down and jump between different objectives. So in objective one, we can see what the topics are, okay? In objective two, same deal, okay? Another way to find the same information is under course documents. I put a PDF that has all the topics listed in order of their due dates. So that's a handy checklist if you wanted to print that out. You can keep track of what you've completed. Okay, so this is the basic structure. The next couple places I wanna show you, this review section, I can't see the problems you're doing in there. So it's a good place to go and practice things without impacting your Alex Pi. It's just problems, just drilling problems a lot. You can use the grade book here to, um, to see what your current score in Alex is. It has your mastery score as well as your scores on each objective. And lastly, if you're stuck on a question, there is an explanation function that's built into Alex. Sometimes this is a really helpful thing to use. So that's often the first place people look for help. It's not, it's not always enough though. Sometimes you're gonna have to go back into the syllabus and check out the textbook, all right? And so the way to do that is I scroll down in my table of contents and I'm looking for the big, bold general chemistry one teaching and learning guide. That's our textbook. So each one of these is a link that you can click on and it takes you to the book. All right, so I would try to find the subject I'm stuck on and go read a little bit about it. You'll also have lecture notes um, that are meant to accompany videos. So that's another resource that you can use. Okay, so hopefully that explains kind of the, the expectations of the course. If I missed anything, or if you have questions, I would encourage you to ask it in the discussion post for this week, the introduction forum, because probably lots of people have that question, okay? It's gonna be a fun semester. I look forward to, to meeting you and working with you.